All right, we're out at the impoundment. Quick lay of the land, there's my pond, and around it I planted the buckwheat and barley. That turned out real well. Standing on the berm, I've been pumping water out of the pond into the impoundment. I got it pretty much totally full, which is certainly hard to tell from here because I have such a thick crop of millet, you can hardly see any standing water, but let's go take a closer look. So here's my water control structure, and you can see I'm, I have water I know, about four inches probably from the top of this thing. If I had one good shot of rain, it would probably fill it up, but if I spin around to my pond, uh, I've drained this thing down pretty significantly, and I don't want to, I want to leave some surface water in there for the purposes of attracting some birds. Now one correction I want to make, I did a video somewhat recently talking about what came up out here and I mistook wild millet for sloth grass uh, simply because I had never planted wild millets, so I didn't really know what to expect. What also kind of tricked me is last year I planted Japanese millet, which was the first time I had done that as well, so I didn't really know what to expect with that but now I have a perfect way to I've been spending some time on online really making sure I know my stuff so I'm not putting bad info out there for you guys but this is Japanese millet I got a nice crop of it down here by the water control structure and the deep end of the impoundment uh, that's all reseed from last year wild millet is this stuff so it's similar, but not not totally the same. A lot of this wild millet has these kind of long needles on it, which confused me and made me think that perhaps this was the uh, sloth grass that was also part of the mix that I put in here. So again, uh, these real dark seed pods, those are the Japanese millet. And most of these, what are these lighter ones, that is the, what they just call wild millet. So again, I planted a mix out here this year of what was 60% wild millet, I believe 20% smart weed and 20% American sloth grass. Uh, I obviously have like perfect conditions for millet because last year the Japanese millet came in ultra thick and this year the, uh, Wild millet came in ultra thick. I got a few stands of smart weed out there. I had one pop up on the berm. There's a close up of the smart weed. But I have yet to identify one stand of the sloth grass. So I mistakenly said I had a bunch last time, but really all I have out here is millet, which isn't the end of the world, but uh, it'll kind of nice to see what that stuff looks like. Let me go take a shot in the pond, or, or I'll walk actually out in the impoundment for you here to give you one last shot. All right, I'm on the side of the impoundment now. We were just standing down there uh, by the thick, thick plot of millet. Up here is where the millet was much thinner. The growth wasn't as thick. We talked about this earlier. Uh, there wasn't as much nutrients in the soil. So I got a th some thinner spots and that actually worked out real well for me uh, because you can see the standing water. Threw a couple decoys out here uh, just to see if we can attract a few birds. But I might try goose hunting out here this weekend. So that's where we're at. Quick update for you. I'll let you know if I can fool any geese into coming in here this weekend.